Hello there, and welcome to my final concept map project. My name's Carl, and this is for ALEC 202. So come all, one, come all, welcome to our leadership circus. Here's just a little flow chart. You know, you got the leader right here in the middle uh, for the leadership circus, the ringmaster, of course. And then I broke it down, the uh, 15 or 14 uh, leadership processes into five groups that I thought they fit best into. So first we have leader-based, then interaction-based, Trust the process, which is a uh, just a short little thing that I put together because I thought that three of them really fit together under that little sentence. Uh, working together and doing what's right. So our first act, we have the monkey show, and the emphasis of the monkey show is leader-based leadership approaches. So in this act, we have uh, the trade approach, the skills approach, and the behavioral approach. And all three of these I kind of felt uh, fit together uh, pretty well because it's putting the emphasis on the leader and why he's a leader um, or, or her, uh, why they're leaders and um, why they're effective as that leader. So whether it be the traits that they're born with, the skills that they've learned throughout their life, or the behaviors and how they treat uh, the followers, that's why that leader is successful as a leader and why people uh, want to be led by him or her. So here's the model of servant leadership. And for Act 2, we have the Tiger Show, which focuses on leader-follower interactions. The Tiger Show, um, I included transformational leadership, authentic leadership, and servant leadership, because I felt like this was when followers started to get a little bit of a voice at the table. So within these three, uh, transformational, authentic, and servant, uh, the leader is starting to reach out to the followers, and you know he's trying to encourage them in transformational. He's trying to be authentic and build this trust with them in authentic. And then for servant, he's really getting down there and working with them to achieve this goal. So I thought these three really worked together well because it was when the leader and the follower started to mesh and really uh, gain that relationship. And here's the models for those. So we got authentic, transformational, and servant leadership here. Uh, act three, we have the lion show uh, with the emphasis on trusting the process. I couldn't really boil this down to one word, so I just picked tr trusting the process because I really thought that these three uh, processes really fit well uh, within that. So for this one, we have uh, adaptive, situational, and path goal uh, theories. So for these, they're basically all pretty similar. Um, and they just kind of talk about how you have a goal and you want to reach it, but along the way there's going to be obstacles. And it's how that leader and those followers adapt and react to those obstacles that really makes uh, the difference in them achieving the goal. Um, so whether it be a roadblock um, along the way in what you're doing or a person that needs a little bit more of a boost, a little bit more encouragement, or just simply motivating the followers to keep them on track, um, it's all about getting from point A to point B as long in, in the obstacles in between. So here's the model of adaptive leadership, situational leadership, and then path goal leadership. And as you can see, it's path, um, and you got the goal at the end, and the obstacles in between. Act four, we have the Clown Act, and this is uh, all about working together. So in the Clown Act, uh, I put uh, LMX and team leadership. Um, so on all of these, I kind of put just a little quote there. I'm, I'm a big quote guy, so um, you'll see some movie quotes and just some things that I've heard along the way from some of my mentors as well as teachers and uh, friends. So um, I put these two together in uh, the working together category because in team leadership, it's really when uh, the leader and the follower start to uh, mesh into leaning on each other and uh, delegating work uh, to get things done. So you can't really be afraid to... Uh, you know, reach out to somebody when you're in the team leadership process. And then for LMX, it's honestly, in my opinion, completely different than team leadership because it's when uh, the leader starts to pick out uh, in and out group uh, followers, which I don't really agree with necessarily, but I can see how it works in some uh, organizations. But I think they're complete opposites. But at the end of the day, uh, both the team leadership and the LMX theory are both about how uh, the group works together and the group dynamics. So it's kind of establishing the pecking order and uh, seeing how the group's going to work and what roles everyone's going to have. And here are the models for those. And then Act 5, our final act, uh, we have the elephant encounter. Uh, and that's what's doing what is right. So I picked the elephant for this one uh, because when I think of an elephant, for some reason, I just think wisdom and, uh, you know, they're they're old and uh, 
in my mind and they just radiate wisdom. So I, I put them uh, with the doing what's right uh, because the three approaches in this, I think, are all about just that, doing what is right. So for gender and culture, uh, that's basically, they're pretty similar. Uh, it's just including others regardless of their gender, their culture, their diversity, whatever their background is, is letting them come into the group and uh, allow their voice to be heard and their ideas to be shared, which really benefits them as well as the group because you're getting this wide diversity of thought and ideas now um, that you might not have even thought about, but a different culture or a different gender might have. And then ethics, uh, ethics just really boils down to doing what is right, even when no one is watching. Uh, it's all about your character and uh, your values. So I really uh, think that ethics is one of my favorite approaches to leadership. It's just doing what's right. I think that really gives the group a purpose as well as um, yourself within it is doing what's right. You have something to strive for as well, aside from your main goal. And there's ethical uh, leadership principles. So basically uh, why I chose a circus for this was, you know, you got the ringmaster who's the main leader. You might have all these different kinds of acts within the circus. And in leadership, you have all different kinds of people, situations, and approaches to deal with. So I thought it was pretty cool that, you know, a ringmaster is in the middle of the circus tent and he can bring all those acts together and really mesh them uh, to get a good result. Um, you know, who would want to go to a one-act circus? You know, that's why, that's my philosophy on leadership now is, you can't just bank on one leadership approach. You know, they really complement each other and work together to, and work well together. So, you know, when you're bringing more than one leadership approach in, it really has uh, the best results. So that's my final uh, project. So thanks for watching. Uh, signing out.